friends, and welcome back to the Rewind podcast of Forward Church. Join us each week as we take a look back on Sunday's message and dig a little deeper into the conversations with those who are teaching across our sites at Forward. We want to invite you to be part of the conversation too. So if something we're talking about on Sunday morning sparks a question in you, head to our website forwardchurch.ca slash ask us and submit your questions there. And we're going to do our best to engage with those questions in this space. With that said, let's jump in and get started. Guess who is back for the Rewind podcast? Me. That's right. It's me. No, I am too. But see, Derek, the thing <laughs> is, they're probably I more excited left. because I'm here to break up the nerd fest that was happening last week Ooh. with the three wow. of you talking wow. about nerdy wow. Marvel <laughs> stuff. Wow. Yep. I wasn't even All following. Right. I was like, what are you talking about? What movie is I, that? There is too much nerd I going someone on. someone say they specifically listen to my messages just so they can get caught up on the latest Marvel. <laughs> News. Also, so, that no. was not Daryl and I did not suggest that question. It's that was true. One hundred percent Andrew's invention. Yes. I go to Andrew specifically for nerd-related topics and yeah. things. Sure, and I always keep you guys you, on a backup. <laughs> Blair, would you say that Andrew is the biggest nerd you know? I don't think so, but. You know, I ha- I do have a mental list, which we can save that for another. I'd love day. to hear the nerd. <laughs> I want to hear the nerd power rankings sometime. <laughs> but I am glad to say that one of my top skills, uh, just in general, in life in general, is breaking up some nerd, some nerdism. Yeah. And uh, that is why I'm here today, especially Break, breaking up nerds. I'm breaking up the nerd, okay. the nerd, yeah. uh, because I am pretty much the coolest person that I know. So you're welcome. <laughs> I'm joking. Please don't email me and talk to me about pride. I'm kidding. Okay. So it was a very special weekend this weekend. Not only Mm -hmm. did we have Good Friday here at one service, right? So all of our, uh, both of our sites, I guess all of our services, right? Like Ingersoll too. too. Ingersoll, Kitchener. Did you spot spot any? people, yep. Did you see Ingersoll people? Awesome. So on Good Friday, we were all meeting together here in uh, one location. Uh, And then on Sunday, we had service at Kitchener and then Cambridge. And we had a great service in Kitchener. I was mm-hmm. there. Yeah. We had an amazing service in Cambridge too. How many baptisms did we have? I lost count. 14. 14. Ooh. Is that a record? No. No. Last Easter, I think we did 21. Did we do like sort of that open invitation last year as well? Like we did this year? Yeah. So but, cool. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Then I got to know. Did you see it at all, Daryl? Because I know you're preaching. I, well, I wasn't there. I watched uh, online. Did you watch it? Yep. Awesome. Yeah. It was awesome to see. So, and on top of that, we had like this really amazing creative element on Good Friday with like that stained glass artwork. Mm -hmm. And here's like some behind the scenes for those, maybe if you were there, you weren't there, but that artwork that got projected onto the, what do you call it? The screen or whatever. Yeah, onto the screen, yeah. Was done by congregation members. Yeah, on the middle screen. That was all four pieces of artwork were drawn up by people in our congregation. Yeah. 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 Oh, it was four. It was four. Yeah. Okay, so there were four different artists yeah. that um, com- uh, contributed to that. And I love that because I just know that there are so many people, like I know so many people that just connect with that type of thing. Um, and it was so cool to see. I don't yeah. know if you want to, sh- I, I don't know all four of the artists. I know some of them, but um, anyway, if you want to know. It would have been cool to see like the original artwork, if that's possible to be put on display. Oh, yeah. Somewhere, uh, maybe we could like hang uh, them I don't know if that's possible, but yeah, it was really cool yeah. what, what, what got made. Yeah. I, I, I haven't seen the originals. I've only seen the digital version. Yeah. But yeah. still, so cool. We've I actually still them. got the digital versions up on the, the TV screens in the lobby. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. We should keep them up for yeah, a while. Really nice. People put a lot of work into that. So yeah. we should keep them up for and sure. And then you guys actually took the, um, yes, the, the side screen. ones, yes. the side so, windows. Yeah. And uh, we're using them over in Kitchener. Yeah, it was a special treat for us because we've we don't uh, always. I haven't even have got to, did those. Look, I haven't looked on the online oh, stream yeah. yet. Did it, did it look good on the stage? They, and they looked amazing awesome. on the stage. Uh, so really, really excited for that. I saw they they put in uh, days of work to put those they, together. They did, yeah, uh, there was, uh, we have a for those who don't know, we have a stage design team. Yeah, uh, and they kind of take 
ideas that get dreamed up and they bring them into reality in incredible ways I yeah. could I can't imagine uh, and so we had people working but, and just using their skills and gifts and abilities to yeah. worship and to help engage other people in worship that, that's always that. the fun thing in our dream team meeting like um, someone will say hey we should do like some stained glass and have something projected and I'm listening to them, I'm like I have no <laughs> idea how's that gonna look good uh -huh. that sounds impossible yeah. to me and then walk into the room uh, on Friday I'm like there you go. Yeah. There, that, that's a or great... like I because I'm on the same team and sometimes yeah. I'm, I'm like there are more for logistical reasons rather than creativity. But sometimes I'm like, oh, man, we don't have spare 10 million dollars to do that. And yet somehow they like are like, you know, somehow. they're like, here's 80 bucks. Go make us an awesome back. Oh, no problem. You know, I just, like, so I just good. blurt out those ideas and then like hope yeah. there's somebody who knows how to somebody do Somebody who's yeah. frugal and tech. I got a so. thought in my head. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point of the dream team is to just, you know, explode your thoughts onto onto the creative uh, discussion boards. Yeah. And the, like the kind of interesting thing I was talking with someone about this of like, you know, Friday. Yeah, there was some of these creative elements. But the thing I really appreciate about that service was just so much of it's just like rooted in just in the word and worshiping together. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and communion. In, in many ways, yeah. it was such a simple service yep. and yet really meaningful. And, and I really appreciate that. Uh, that we're able to have that as a church together. Because last year was, I can't remember if there was still um, restrictions in place. I, Do you remember? I was trying to remember whether we still had restrictions or whether restrictions had just lifted or we're just going to, we were right in mm -hmm. that spot where the, the, the major restrictions were either just lifting. Yeah had just lifted or were just about to lift. Yeah. I think they were just about to lift. Yeah. I feel like it was May when we really saw a change. Okay. Yeah. And and I mean even that still took time for people to be comfortable enough to to so because it was so packed. It was just so awesome to yeah. be in community with with your church family with that stuff. Yeah. So oh man, such a good weekend. Um I'm curious to know what A what your favorite part was or if you have any stories to share from the weekend. Because it was a busy, packed weekend. We had it Easter was, Jam too, didn't we? Uh, like, that was the weekend. That before. was the weekend before. That That's was, right. That was before. That's right. Yeah, it's all yeah. a blur. <laughs> I um, a good blur. My, f I. It's hard to not love a kids choir. Oh, absolutely. Right. So I, I kept on saying to people, "Hey, listen, on Easter Sunday, there's a kids choir at the beginning, and yeah. there's baptisms at the end. So as long as I don't mess up the middle." <laughs> It's going to be a great, it's going to be a great time yeah. because how can you not like oh, yeah. just, l l and those kids, man, they were belting it out. Yeah. They like, sometimes you get kids up there and like they're standing in front of a big group. Oh, yeah. They've got this big band around them and yet yeah. like they were singing oh, with yeah. all their hearts. Love that. And then uh, the same thing I thought, you know, sometimes we get baptisms and it's a lot like for people who don't regularly stand in front of yeah. hundreds and hundreds of people, mm -hmm. it can be overwhelming. Yeah. And I thought, yeah. oh boy, like I wonder like if this is going to be a lot for people who are getting baptized. Yeah. And to see the smiles on the faces and to, to hear like the enthusiasm of the yeses yeah. to the questions that were asked them in the tank. Yeah. Uh, like I just won't forget that just yeah. brought me so much joy. Yeah. It, it didn't matter. It, there could have been two people in the room or 1200 people in the room and it didn't, it, they, they weren't saying it, it wasn't about the people in the room. It yeah. was about the questions that they were answering and who they were committing themselves to. Yeah. They didn't need a mic. They we didn't could, need a mic. We could hear them. Yep. I love that. Yeah. Uh, did you have a favorite part? Derek? Yeah. Um, you already mentioned it. Um, just the fact that all of our sites come together for the good Friday yeah. service. Really, really appreciate that. It's, you know, you never know who who's all going to be there because it is kind of a different service. It's on a Friday. Um, some people are traveling, visiting family and other areas. Um, and, and it was so good just to see so many people all together in one spot, worshiping together. Uh, you bump into someone that you, you haven't seen in a little while on your way towards getting the communion elements. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, those types of um, those types of situations where you you're there in person mm -hmm. and you're rubbing shoulders with other people so mm -hmm. that that to me is always really really fun to see uh and then just on a personal level i mean um just as a pastor i always appreciate opportunities where i get to uh, sit down and pray with people uh so i've had a couple opportunities this weekend to to do that 
And uh, I mean, that happens whether it's Easter or not, but sure. uh, those, those are always the times where I really appreciate just being on to uh, spend time. Uh, as much as I love people in big crowds, I love just sitting down just one-to-one -one with someone yeah. and just talking, connecting at that level. So yeah, I love that. In, in terms of like story highlights, um, hearing from a number of different people all came up to me and said similar things, which was that like you can start to think and believe living in Canada in 2023 that maybe God is kind of done doing stuff right. in Canada <laughs> and they, that, you know, like are, are our best days behind us, right? Yeah. And just hearing from people saying Man, it was just so awesome to see how God is on the move and God is working in people's lives yes. and God is not done working in the hearts and lives of people in Canada. Yeah, I think that that was probably the favorite part for me was just kind of that feeling and that sight, seeing that, uh, whether it be in the baptisms or even just in conversation too at Kitchener yeah. with, with uh, um, fellow church members, just see, being like, wow, no, I mean, it's it's so easy to get clouded and, and to, to think that way. No. Um, but it's I think refresh is maybe a good word. Um, although I think it's a word that's used a lot, but I it, think what it, what it does, Blair. I think what Easter helps do is it helps to get us focused again. Focus is a great right. It, it, we can, we can. It's easy to get our eyes off of Christ and onto all the things that we read on social media or yeah. in, or hear in the news, <laughs> and start to allow those things to be the thing that dominates our thinking, and then to come and remember what Christ has done for us. And that we serve a risen savior who is still at work in the world today. I think yeah. that just, we, we just, that just brings us back to the core yeah. of, uh, of what this is all about. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Steve's really good at that. Cause I tend to be that, that YouTube person who, uh, they, YouTube sends me algorithms that are toxic and then <laughs> I just get off and I'm like, I'll just be like, man, this just sucks. And Steve's like, turn it off, turn it off. You're getting clouded. Yeah. It's, you know, focus on here's your Bible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes he'll hit me with it. Yeah. No, he does not. Uh, I think that was my favorite part for sure of the weekend. It was so great. Easter is, mm. is just, I, I think I've served like on the worship team every Easter for like 10 years. Cause I, I ask, I'm like, can I please serve her? Easter? I just mm. love it. Um, so much just being a part of that. So, um, I now, obviously, uh, we took, we're still in our same series, okay, um, imperfect, uh, a study of a messy church, but we did a little hop, skip and a jump. We jumped into chapter 15, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, we, and we landed on Sunday, which the message was called because Christ has been raised. You can be too. First Corinthians 15, one to 11 to be clear. We did not skip over. We are going back. We are going to go back. Okay. Yep. Uh, so next week's pro well, we'll talk about it next week later, but, uh, so we did a jump ahead and landed here. Uh, I'd love to hear an overview, uh, and the main takeaways of your messages. Do you want to start Daryl? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so it was fun jumping ahead to chapter 15. And so really the big point I want to share on Sunday was that fact that we have, uh, reasons to believe in the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, Paul is making this incredibly clear. And um, beyond that, I said, not only do we have reasons to believe, but we have reasons to want to believe in the resurrection. Not only is there uh, facts, but there's reasons for us to see why this is such good news for us. And so he lays out the facts that there's historical evidence, there is biblical evidence, there's personal evidence. Um, but then he says that, hey, like you should want this to be true because of the hope that we receive in Christ and how he sets all things right at the end of the day. And so uh, that's kind of where the passage was going. Mm -hmm. And uh, Derek, you talked obviously about the same things, but you had a different list. Yeah. So I really focused on um, why it's crucial as Christians that we believe in the resurrection, I looked at five things that are true uh, because the resurrection is true. So uh, it's critical because the trustworthiness of all other Christian teaching rests on the reality of the resurrection is true because the forgiveness of sins depends on it, because our hope is built on it, because it proves that death has been defeated, and because since Christ rose from the dead, we can too. I loved it. And uh, <clears throat> I'm curious. I mean, like, this was very much the 
like the guy, this message was like really talking, not just like centered around the gospel. Like we were talking about, well, like, yeah, if you go to the first few verses in, in first Corinthians, it is the, the kind of clearest distillation of the heart of the heart of the gospel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When, when Paul says, Hey, I've passed on to you. What is of first importance? Like this is the absolute bedrock, most important reality that everything else is based on. Yeah. That Christ Jesus lived, that he died for our sins, that he was buried and that he rose again. If, if you remove any of those pieces, you don't have Christianity. Yeah. It, it, you cannot remove one of those blocks because the whole thing collapses. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's why I think that's why I really enjoyed um, this message because I think it's fair to say that like, it doesn't matter if you're talking about something topically and you're, or you're in the old Testament or you're, you know, uh, discussing a completely different book of the Bible. Like it's all going to land s talking about, you know, the touching on the gospel. Right? right. But this was like, like you said, it was the core of the core. Yeah. So I loved it. Um, now obviously as pastors, right. This, this is a message and a story that you have preached many times before, surely not just at Easter. Right. But I'm curious if you can share anything that stood out to you or shook you more this time around mm. in your, in your preparation. Uh, because of just some of the incidences that have I've been involved with or have happened around me this week. The idea that death has been just totally and utterly crushed and defeated by Christ. Yeah. Um, I, you know, it's, it's one thing to say that Christ overcame death or, but no, like death is dead. Yeah. <laughs> now we, we will, we won't see the fullness of that as Paul makes clear until Christ returns right. and, and finally just does away with death for all time. But, it, you know, I, I said on, I think I, the, uh, off the cuff, I, I I think I said on Sunday, it's the equivalent of me arm wrestling Jack, yeah. right? Like it was just a, it's just a no, no, stand to chance. no yeah. contest yeah. win for yeah. Jesus. Yeah. But on Good Friday, it looked like the opposite had taken place, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yet the way this ends, uh, it's, this is, we just have so much hope because of it. There's just hope that cannot be taken from us. I'm glad you said that because, and I'm going to get to yours, Daryl, but yeah. mine attaches so well to that because the thing that stood out to me most, this, this message and this Easter was that, was that it looked like if you really sit and think about it, and I've been a Christian a long time, but like, if you really think about it, they, they did think it was over. Oh yeah. Like they, could you imagine, just think about that for a second, the despair that they must have felt because mm. like we sit in church on good Friday, we know the whole story and it's like, you know, you're remembering and your feet, you know, but nobody went to the, nobody went there expecting a tomb empty. Right. They sure. went to anoint the body of a dead man. Right. And, and the love that they had, ha that they had from the things they learned, like everything, the journey, the ministry, they thought it was over. Yep. Mm. And like to, to kind of comprehend or try to comprehend how they must have truly felt like on the Saturday, the Friday and then the Saturday, you know, yeah. it was like, whoa. And then on the Sunday, realizing what actually is happening, the, the immense joy. Like, I don't know that for well, me was at first it's like not even it's shock. Yeah. And then it's joy for those who finally comprehend it. But then even when the, when the women run and tell the men, they're like, yeah, you guys are out of your mind. Because it would yeah. be such, such good news. It was be, would be the best news ever that it yeah. couldn't possibly. So I could see there. And you wouldn't want your heart to even begin sure, to believe, right? And then hurt. to be, yeah. and then to be crushed again. Yeah. Yeah. And so I realize that that probably seems strange, but I'm just saying that, you know, when, when we sit and we know the full story, where it's, Friday's good, right? Yeah. That it occurred because we know that yeah. Sunday is there. And that for me was just something that stood out most to me this mm. Easter. Yeah. Um, Daryl, I want to know what stood out to you yeah. in this prep. Um, yeah. Um, I, I love this passage for, for so many reasons. Uh, probably the, the biggest one is I, I, just, I think I just, I know a lot of people who, um, think of Christianity mostly in the intellectual realm, just okay. kind of, um, 
and it, it never quite becomes personal for them. Mm. And, and so, um, as verse 19 says, if in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. And, and, and I love just grappling with that reality again of, you know, Hey, like if this isn't true, if, if Christ didn't rise from the grant uh, from the grave, um, there really isn't anything in scripture that's really worth holding on to mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, to think of it merely as a book of, of some like good moral laws, some good ethics some like some good teaching, like that isn't enough to sustain it. Yeah. Um, you know, like there, there's, there's actually something behind that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so that, that to me is always the, the reason why I love this passage is just kind of the, reminding ourselves, reminding our souls of, of why it's so good that the resurrection is, is true, that we're not just studying a historical book. Um, I was just driving into the office today, listening to a historical podcast that actually Derek recommended to me. I wrote it down too. You like it? Yeah. I'm like, I'm like five minutes into it. Okay. It's good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's not, not a long drive for me, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, they're, they're comparing, um, uh, Islam and Christianity and just like talking, it's like, um, not the, the podcast isn't from a Christian perspective, no. it's just historical. And they're just comparing Islam and Christianity and like the two different books and, you know, and I'm like, you know, but we go deeper than that. Like it isn't just uh, a historical book that we're reading. It, it is, uh, it is a Christ who, who really did conquer death, really did conquer sin. And, and that gives us hope for a future, uh, and then on to Derek's point there about um, this passage, really Jesus conquering death. Uh, there's some people in my life who I know who are wrestling with the reality of death right now and seeing like, hey, that, that's something that we no longer have to fear. Yeah. Um, that it would be, um, there's so much more hope in that even when you're at the, those last uh, few days of your life that mm. you can be holding on to. So uh, I think that's important for anyone who's struggling with that right now to read the, all of chapter 15 because he really, the scripture really gives us hope for, for what happens beyond this life. Mm. I, I think um, it, it's, it can be easy for us to like, we, we can become all about the cross and I get it. Uh, it's amazing to think about Christ dying for our sins, but I think way too often we lose the empty tomb. Mm -hmm. And uh, there have been entire denominations who have rejected the necessity of an actual, literal, physical resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, the moment that that happens that movement, that church is dead, even if they don't know it. And, and, and yep. all of those denominations have pretty much come to their end or are on their death throes right now. Like this is just, it, 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 you know, yes, the cross is essential, yep. but the empty tomb is every bit as essential. Mm. It, it could have been, well, even think of it this way, it didn't have to be a cross, but it did have to be an empty grave. Yeah. Uh, Christ could have died many other ways, but he, he had to come back. Uh, and we celebrate that. I, I heard of another church tradition. Uh, I don't know exactly where, where this falls in the calendar, but not just Resurrection Sunday, but there's Ascension Sunday. And there's, the, ah. there's yeah. churches where they, uh, I think we should adopt this, where they, um, where they have uh, kites. They go outside and they fly kites. Just kind of like this remembering of Christ ascending into heaven. I'm like, oh, that's so much fun. Yeah. Uh, if you have young kids, maybe that'll be something fun to celebrate this year. Uh, is grab some kites and uh, just kind of that visual reminder of what Christ, uh, uh, what ultimately happens there. So, anyways. I mean, as a parent, that's kind of fun. Yeah, that's I like that fun, suggestion. Right? That's a good idea. I like that. <laughs> I like that. There you go. Um, oh man, absolutely. I uh, this. I'm going to go back. I want to go back and just read this whole passage again, just because it's, I want to just hang out in it for the rest of the week and obviously for my whole life, but you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> you're looking at me like you don't know what I'm saying, but in that case, we will move on to the next question. So uh, there are people who have been Christians for a long time. Maybe some listeners that have been Christians for a long time. Do you think for those of us who have heard the gospel many times and been Christians for a long time, that there are any common pieces or aspects that we can often or commonly forget or overlook or gloss over? You already mentioned a denomination who 
completely. Now, do they just not believe that he rose from the dead, or they just skip over it's, it? You just, you just, it's just a metaphor. Oh, right. It's not really literal Jesus rising from the dead. Oh, like we I have see. entire churches and entire denominations in Canada who have come to that place where they've discarded the idea because you know that's miraculous and yeah are they really viewing, really it's anything that's supernatural yeah, they would yeah so so is that because they view jesus as just like a good he's person a great, he's a great example but he's uh, not for us the son of had God. some great teachings for us okay yeah but not well yeah. oh that's a whole nother podcast that's a whole nother podcast <laughs> okay. but we, blair we have churches in canada where you don't have to actually even be a theist to be the the yeah. leader and pastor of those churches right, right? I, I they're not churches right so i i use that i should put quotations around that okay. word that's not a church okay. if you belong to a, a community that denies any of the things that we talk about here in uh first corinthians 15 it's not a church hmm. mm-hmm. that's like uh i didn't know that if i'm being honest i didn't know that it seems very empty what's the it point is. of that but it is okay. it, it, it absolutely yeah. is and that's a kind of Paul's point. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's that's like the whole point. if all you've got is hope for this yeah. age and some yeah. nice teachings to live by, but this isn't real. Yeah. What are you, why are you wasting yeah. your time? It, it kind of goes nothing, back yeah. to the quote that I said on Sunday of this monk who was being interviewed right. by a journalist where he said, you know, silence, solitude, that these are good things in themselves that even if Christina wasn't true, he yeah. would say that he still lived a good life. Yeah. And you read that and it sounds nice, yeah. but then you're like, but why? No, yeah, actually, not really. Your life stinks. No, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Like if, if none of this is real, I'm, you might as well be going like, have you, have you heard of a roller coaster? Like there's like <laughs> way more fun things in the world that, than that. Sure. Um, you know, it's, it sounds, it's, it's, you know, it's a uh, faux deep. It, it's not yeah. actually a deep thing that he said. Yeah. yeah. And that's where, you know, Paul is giving kind of a counterpoint to that right yeah. there. So. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good. Uh... I, I think uh, going back to the whole, I think that we think that forgiveness of sins is just a cross thing. Okay. That's Can you why I, I made my, but that's why the second point I had was the forgiveness of our sins depends on it because Paul says it. Yeah. Our sins are not forgiven if Christ is not risen from the dead. Okay. And we think, well, our sins are forgiven on the cross and they are. Mm hmm. But there's no proof that those sins were paid for unless the tomb is empty. So you, oh, that's right. And you said that it was the receipt. It's the receipt, right? Yeah. If you ha- if you don't have a receipt, you can't prove that the thing has been paid for. Right. Mm. Yeah. That's and, a- and the empty tomb is what assures us that this that the payment that was made on behalf of our sins was an acceptable payment was received. Yeah. You can try try going into a store to return something they might give you credit but no one's yeah. giving you cash if you don't have a receipt because you can't prove that it's paid for yeah and it goes back to that sorrow that i was sort of connecting to before of like if if the resurrection if sunday didn't come the sorrow that they had of the of it just thinking it was just done and yeah. over with there was no receipt there was no celebratory receipt yeah mm. And then, of course, also in Scripture, we read that the same power that rose Christ from the dead lives in us through the right. Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. Like, so we actually live every day post-Easter in resurrection power. I love mm. that. That's yeah. I can totally see how if you've been a Christian a long time, that's that would be a common piece or aspect that yeah. you'd either forget or gloss over or uh, not fully comprehend the impact for sure. Yeah. Anything to add, Daryl? Yeah, I think... In, in 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 answering that question that you gave us of, you know, for those who've heard the gospel many times, um, I think there becomes this danger of, um, um, similar to what Derek said, um, but there's this danger of of assuming the gospel and, and then moving on to something else. So it's assuming, okay, yep, all that's true. So um, not going to deny it, mm-hmm. you know, but but there's other things that we need to focus on. Um, other things in our lives and, and just kind of going off in that direction. And, um, and there, I mean, uh, there was a, there was a brief time that I experienced where, um, a number of years ago where it seemed like every church I went to on, on Easter, they're like, it's Easter Sunday. And this is where we're going to start our marriage series. You know, it's so Easter weird. Sunday. So we're going to, we're going to, you know, 
let's talk about your finances. Let's get that figured out. And every time I'm like, wow. wait, wait, wait. So you're using this because they knew that there'll be more people in the room and, and marriage is a good thing to talk about. I mean, finances or like whatever practical thing. I'm like, hey guys, like you're kind of missing something. Now, that was a trend I saw a little while ago. And then now, thankfully, like there's been this big course correction. Most churches uh, are, are not doing that. I think they finally realized, hey, that's kind of weird. Uh, that's not actually... <laughs> helping us uh, launching our brand new series um, on, on Easter by talking about something like that. And, and so, but I think that this commonly becomes this problem that we assume that there's things beyond the gospel, but what we see in Corinthians is that Paul is pointing everything to the gospel. Mm-hmm. Uh, really the first six uh, chapters of uh, Corinthians, Paul is saying, hey, these are things that I've heard about you. And then the next few chapters, chapters 7 to 14, it, now he answers questions that they have. And then verse 15, uh, chapter. or chapter 15, yeah. now he jumps into, and here's the deal, guys. It's all about the gospel. It's all about we have a risen Christ. That's like everything's kind of leading up to that. Mm-hmm. And, and so that's, I think, a really important thing for us to remember, especially, I mean, like if you have young kids, if you have teenagers, like like the way in which we think about Christianity and, and, and the resurrection and the gospel, like the, the more that we keep Jesus at the center of our lives, the more that we can share this to that next generation mm-hmm. and not just uh, in really explaining it and sharing it with them of why this is so important. So we don't mm-hmm. just assume that... Um, Jesus is a good guy. Going to church is a good thing. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, you just begin to make it into a tradition. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't actually pass the faith on to that next generation. Right. And that's something that we really need to be um, aware of, of mm-hmm. how we're passing on that faith. And, and that it would be a true faith in them that they would, mm-hmm. you want your kids to truly believe in Christ and not just follow in patterns of tradition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it seemed the question it just as you're ans- both answering, it's like, that's a legit question because even hearing about your church experiences where they're just almost touched it and then skipped over. Well, this it. is the, th- yeah. you know, we think Paul says, I passed on to you what is of first importance. And sometimes I, I think oftentimes in, in the Christian life and in the church, we think Paul just says, I passed on to you this first Oh, I see. And then, and now that you, that was the first thing, but now we get to the other things, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see. And I think first importance is very different. He's saying like everything else flows out of this all the time. Yeah. You never move past this. Right. Everything else is an implication of this. Right. And it's not as though Paul, he doesn't have like a word processor. He's like, oh wait, first importance. Oh, it's at the end of the letter. Oh, can I hit the backspace <laughs> here and re-edit this? No, like he he's doing this on purpose yeah. of where he's building towards this first yeah. importance in yeah. chapter 15. Mm. I love that. Um, okay, let's let's move on. <clears throat> I want to know. This is I think this is a great question too, because Well I've you heard, would you wrote it. I did. I so, mean honestly. Uh, I uh, obviously it. you think it's a great <laughs> yeah. question. Yeah. Will the, will be and the listeners will be the judge of this. Right. Blair's not used Dan. to not <laughs> she's not used to writing her own I questions. Know. Uh, I, I'm very used to it. I've just had a break for a little while. Yeah. Speaking of which, don't forget to send in your questions, folks. <laughs> we'll so. be back to it this week. No, yeah. we will. I I'm anticipating many questions. Lots of sex week. questions oh, coming up this week. I don't get oh, paid boy. enough for <laughs> this. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, I think this is a good question because I've heard it asked before. So, and Derek, you mentioned it in your, it was your message. What does it mean to deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow him? We talked about people who have been Christians for a long time. Maybe there are listeners who are, have not been Christians for a long time. Tell yep. us what that means. Uh, functionally, it means this. There are going to be times where Jesus tells you to do something and you don't want to do it. And you do the Jesus, what Jesus wants you to do yep. and not what you want to do. So in that statement, what's the cross? The thing that you don't want to do? Uh, pick up your cross is like, yeah, it's its the being willing to uh, okay. suffer and sacrifice, right? The cross is a picture of suffering right. and sacrifice. So you, you have to be willing to suffer and sacrifice yeah. for the sake of Jesus. And nothing is tougher for most of us than denying ourselves. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's um, like the whole, pretty much for all of us, at least for me, like that's the totality of our journey after yeah. coming to, after coming to crisis, figuring out, okay, how do I deny myself and follow Jesus instead? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, easy, straightforward answer. I love it. Um, let's jump to the next one. Oh, unless you have, do you want to add anything? No, nope. that was nope. kind of from Derek's sermon, so I yep. let him answer it. But um, this one's uh, I. <laughs> Yeah, we by, are. By the way, I should I maybe give a little context okay. there. Context, because the I think where I was uh, talking about that was going back to Daryl's comment where he's talking about Paul saying, "Hey, we're to be pitied above all people." Right. It's because coming to Jesus is not a. You don't come to Jesus because it's going to make all of your life here on Earth easy. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Oftentimes, coming to Jesus is going to make things more difficult and more complex. And mm. if there's not a hope that your suffering and struggle today for the sake of Jesus is okay because there's a tomorrow that's better than your today. Then what are we, what are we doing? Yeah. Like it's very difficult to, to make sense of it if there's no hope for tomorrow. Mm. And, and that's where like you see in, especially like in Greek philosophy, they had the, the idea of like the hedonists. Yeah. Uh, those who just, um, um, the hedonist philosophers, like they only believed in seeking out pleasure. Like, like as long as yeah. avoid anything that causes harm yeah. and pain, just whatever is pleasurable. Yeah. Whatever uh, brings you comfort, you know, whatever gives you pleasure. Pursue yeah. after that. Uh, and Paul is saying like, Hey, following Christ is quite often the opposite of that. Be- and, but, but hedonism in a world where God doesn't exist and there's no such thing as eternity, there's just this life, yeah. is the most rational, logical right. way to go about living. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Otherwise known as, hey, you do you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't follow know what your, they call it. Follow your heart. Yeah. Follow, that's another one. Yeah. Follow your heart. As and, long and, as you're happy. Yeah. yeah. And, and then we, we see within the world of like how hedonism doesn't actually um, satisfy. It doesn't actually... Right. I mean, it doesn't work itself out. No. Uh, so I mean, like in Greek philosophy, there's, there's the hedonists and there's the Stoics who are yeah. like, no, life's all about pain and suffering. But there's just, no, just bear it. But there's no <laughs> walk through and don't make there, a big deal about no it. There's no hope beyond that. So the Stoics were just like not a good hang. Like they yeah, just they were are. not a fun time. And, and this is why he's saying like, hey, following Christ means sacrifice. But there's there's something beyond it. Yeah. There's there yeah. is a there's an ultimate hope. Uh, that's what he's pointing to in this in this verse. Uh, hope is the the word for this whole weekend and the messages and the podcast. That is the word of the day, of the week. Um, moving on to the next one. Uh, what, so this is, a, we talked about one that was related to Derek's message. I have one for you, Daryl. Yeah. You talked about prophecy in the Old Testament. Why is the prophecy in the Old Testament so important to the New Testament? Is the New Testament more important is the New Testament more important? Um, well, it depends on who you ask. Uh, uh, you're asking I'm me. I'm asking Daryl Siemens. Oh, okay. Uh, Pastor Daryl Siemens. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, had a professor in college who would call the New Testament the appendix to the, oh, to the Old Testament. He was uh, joking. He was wrong. Uh, was he the Old uh, Testament survey teacher? <laughs> he, yeah, he was. <laughs> How Anyways, <could> I guess? <laughs> he, he, he said it with tongue in cheek. Of, okay. Obviously, he didn't yes. actually believe that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I mean, Jesus says very clearly in Matthew mm-hmm. chapter five that he fulfills everything that is mm-hmm. in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. All the Old Testament law has been uh, fulfilled in him. And so, yes, like everything is pointing, whether it's Old Testament or New Testament, it's all pointing to to Christ. Mm-hmm. And so that means that we need to be spending more time in the New Testament. That means that we need to be spending more time focusing on on Him rather than the Old Testament. But the Old Testament is incredibly valuable. We don't leave that behind because it helps us to make sense of what is happening in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like this precursor to everything. It's where you really want to get the context to kind of give a modern example, it's like watching a Marvel movie right now without watching the first 25 films. Can leading you just up zoom in on it. my face for a second? I know. There you go. Blair wanted this to be in the nerd <laughs> podcast. Uh, I'm like, all those give context, right? And then, and then now you watch, you're like, oh, who is this person? What's all happening? Oh, that's what so, I sound like when I watch. So, <laughs> So the Old Testament is because you didn't start that. in the Old Testament, yeah, exactly. Blair. Oh you my goodness, this analogy <laughs> is gold. Like I set uh, this up perfectly. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Uh, and that's where I read just a bunch of passages of the Old Testament talking about the Messiah, talking about 
what's going to happen. So now when Christ died and when he resurrected, it all makes sense, yeah. especially when you read those passages that would mm -hmm. talk about this suffering servant or the one whose uh, heel that would be bruised by mm -hmm. the serpent. Uh, the bruising is, is part of the pain and suffering that the Messiah would go through in which he would crush the head of Satan, in which he would you know, ultimately defeat uh, sin and death in the world. And so, but we can't stay in the Old Testament. That That's, I think, a problem I've seen in some people is that they they overvalue the Old Testament, spending all their time reading that and, and thinking that we have to follow all those old Jewish laws uh, that the New Testament has said, hey, no, we are free from that because those those forms no longer function the way that they were intended to back then because mm -hmm. of what happened, what was accomplished on the cross. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's where I wouldn't point one is like a more important than the other, but definitely uh, all of it is pointing towards Christ. Mm -hmm. Anything to add on that one, uh, Derek? Nope. All right. Uh, we are, and this is our last question. What would you say to the listener who is listening in whether out of curiosity, maybe they were there on Sunday and they were just curious uh, or who feels pulled toward this truth, but feels held back somehow from making a real decision to find their hope in Jesus. Um, well, one, if you're, I would encourage you to continue tracking with us. Yeah. Right. Like, so come out again next week, you know, um, or, in, engage in an equip class, join yeah. a group, like, this, whether this is real or not, is the most important thing that you could spend your time figuring out. Mm -hmm. now, I, obviously, I, I, I have come to the point where I believe 100% absolutely Jesus lived. He really did die and he, and he really did uh, rise from the dead. Mm -hmm. And you coming to a conclusion on this, if this is true, there's nothing more important that you could figure out. So like clear your calendar and figure it out. Like that would be my biggest encouragement yeah. to you is because of the, you know, what I talked about on Sunday, like these are the realities that are true if Christ rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. And as we've talked about, if he didn't, why are you wasting your time on any of this? Mm -hmm. the, I would just like, this is not, um, uh, uh, Matt Chandler has often said, church makes a terrible hobby. Yeah. It's, it's just not. There are so many better things that you can do unless this is actually real. Mm -hmm. in, in which case, there's nothing better that you could invest yourself in or invest your time in. Mm. Mm. And I don't know that you said if there's a thing. I, I, I would love to sit down and, and hear from you. If you've got like a question or something that is nagging at you and mm -hmm. you're just like, I want to believe this, but I've got this thing that is keeping me there, mm -hmm. whether it's me, whether it's Daryl, whether it's Pastor Kirk or Kevin or Andrew or Rachel or anybody on staff, or you've got a friend that you came with, a, yeah. you know, a coworker, family a family member, member yeah. like sit down and, and bring their, your question to them and say, Hey, like I've, I heard what was being talked about. I really think that like, I, I might want to believe this, but I'm struggling with this. Yeah. Mm. And we would love to be able to help you process through that. Yeah. And you said track with us. Hey, backtrack with us too. We put our, our series series yep. on our website, yep. forwardchurch.ca. And I was thinking as you were talking. And about, on our YouTube channel. Yes. And YouTube. Yep. And I was thinking while Daryl was answering his question about the prophecy in the Old Testament, I was thinking, hey, I noticed this a lot when we were doing our Exodus series. Sure. Go back and check out our Exodus series and you can see for yourself the connection. Um, and uh, yeah, track with us any of the series is mm. uh, also you can if you want do want to talk to somebody text in you can really just text in um, counsel is yep. an option uh, equipped uh, or, sorry it's just equip right yep. for our classes coming up um, and even email go Derek. to our website and grab any of our staff yeah. emails and yeah. send us a message and Derek go F. for a coffee Derek F yep. and Daryl S both at forward. Well, make sure you spell my name right or it won't <clears throat> go anywhere. D-E-R-I-C. I mean, D-E-R-I-K. You got it's it. It's natural. D -E -R -I -K -F you want to say D-E-R-I-K-F. You can even, uh, yeah, you can even message us on Facebook. Yeah, like, yeah. anything. People message just on our <laughs> Facebook page, Kitchener Cambridge, and, and we'll get back to you. I always yeah. say just throw something at the wall and it will stick. Call the office and Blair's daughter Lola will pick sure. up the phone. She's, <laughs> she's in there today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. 
No, that's, that is um, awesome and so important. And even, and, and with that said too, if you are someone who did text in a question or maybe we've not answered it yet, we did put a pin in a couple, but if we didn't answer it, you know, tech failed us or something, even throw that at the wall. Just yeah, email we were, it to somebody. We have not like ignored you something no. has happened and it didn't make it yeah. to us so please send it in again yeah whether yeah. it be at uh, any of the outlets that we talked about but um we yeah, yeah if it just yeah keep tracking with us um is there any we do have we do have an equip class starting like in yeah. like a week we got a couple yeah we've got uh caring for god's creation that mark oh, hartley right. is teaching yeah we've got uh uh, Andrew is doing how to we from a couple weeks ago yep, how, how to, to judge, judge without being judgmental. Yes, um, and th- those are posted on the website too if they want to mm-hmm. um, check out what's there. Okay. Uh, what a great week! I'm so excited. We are taking we are gonna swerve and we're gonna take uh, you're gonna take us back to Exodus six six seven. Uh, I jumped out. Uh, I'm letting Kirk talk about sex. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have a funny feeling Dar- you did that Daryl's, on purpose. Daryl's on and Kirk's on. <laughs> yeah, we're both on. And we're covering the last half of chapter six. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I Then I'm going to, the next week I will talk about marriage, singleness, and divorce. So if there's ever a week that a kid in my family could be sick, next week is the week. And somebody else can host that one. <laughs> Just kidding. It's going to be awesome. I think that's when we did. We did put a pin in a couple of questions that are related to that. So we will bring those questions yep. up that uh, next week. Yep. Um, again, if there are any questions related to even this week, send them in. We love answering them. Thanks for tuning in with us this week. Uh, we are excited. We were excited to hang out with you. And we're excited to hang out with you again. And we'll see you next week.